Does the tail wheel on your brush hog do this? The reason that brush hog tail wheels get wobbly like this is because that bushing that rides on this axle right here wears out. So these are the two parts we've got to fix this. This is called your tail wheel hub. And what this does is it bolts inside of this tail wheel, but underneath this rubber cap, it's simply a metal bushing that rides against this axle. And the only thing that keeps that from wearing out is constant grease. And even if you constantly grease them, they're still gonna wear out eventually. Another way you can fix this is get a whole tail wheel assembly. This is called the fork, and this is called the hub, and this is called the axle, and this is called the actual tail wheel. The thing that it's doing now that is that as it wobbles, when you go over uneven ground, it'll start to like kick the tail wheel back and forth because it can't track true. And that tends to tear up the pasture or whatever it is that you're mowing. So we wanna get this replaced so this thing tracks true straight behind the brush hog. First step we have to do is take off this old axle and I brought all the big wrenches that I had and the biggest wrench I have is one and five sixteenths and it's not big enough for that. So we're gonna use an adjustable and hopefully we can hold the bolt end with this pair of channel locks. This shouldn't be overly tight. So this is a jam nut and when you're tightening it up, you don't wanna squeeze these forks so much that it impedes on the hub right there so it wasn't that tight. All right, let's see what's wore more, the actual hub or the axle. It's looking like the hub from this angle. You can see by the amount of grease that's on here that I keep this pretty well greased up, but it still wore a little right there where the threads are. You see the threads are a little flatter. So I could probably reuse this axle, but since I bought a new one, We'll use the new one. See the wear right there from that bushing kind of wobbling against that end of the axle. I don't see where this end, that's where the threads are. I don't see where this end is worn. Maybe a little bit I can feel with my fingers. And you'll notice I have or these orange gloves on. I really like these. They keep my hands clean when I'm messing with grease. We'll put a link down below, but they're really, really cheap on Amazon and uh, just really help to keep your hands clean when you're working on farm equipment. Go ahead and look at the holes here in the fork. And they don't look too bad. They still look round. So this fork will be good to go for a few more years. So now if we take a closer look at the hub, we can see that it's just wallowed out here on the end. This would be the thread end of the axle. We'll turn it over this side and you'll see that it's kind of kind of still intact on this side. There's a little bit of metal missing here, but it's not wallowed out like the other side. So the next step is to take off these four nuts and luckily the back side of them is captivated. So you don't have to hold the back side. Should just be able to spin off these three quarter nuts pretty quickly. So far, the hardest part of this job was getting this socket off of that nut the second hardest part of this job was taking the plastic wrapper off of this. If you can do those two things quickly, this is probably a 15 minute job. Underneath these nuts is a lock washer and it's pretty flat, but you're always fixing something around the farm. So I'll probably save them. And there's the old hub. You can see how wallered out it is on that side. So much so that the cap wouldn't fit. I broke the cap from the new one which fit nicely over here. Well, let's, let's compare the two. So this would be the side. And you see the bushing is just completely wore out of there. And the, there's a nice fresh bushing on the new one. So the new hub comes with all the hardware that you need. So I'll take off the four nuts. It looks like they're fine threaded. And there's a lock washer under each nut. Put it up from the bottom like it was sitting before and tighten everything back up. There's no pattern. It can go any way of four different ways. So I'll hold that up while I start the nuts. One nut should hold it. Put all the lock washers on. Lock washer and the old one. The old one's much thicker. Here's the new one. Here's the old one. So what I like to do whenever there's a pattern like this, I'll tighten this one barely, then tighten this one barely. I'll tighten each one of these so they just allow the hub to mate against the rim here. And then I'll go back and hit them all, get them completely torqued down. 
Look at this side, the hub seated all the way around. Go ahead and torque them up. All right, I've torqued them all up and it looks like I've got the same amount of threads showing on the front side of every nut. Except that one. Now that we got the hub on there and all the nuts are torqued, take our washer, put it on our new axle bolt. All right, we got the new axle bolt in. We'll put this washer over here. Probably could put that washer inside of there and it would take up some of that space. I think that's what we'll do. Put the washers inside, which won't be easy with one person, but should be able to do it. Actually, I think we'll just put a washer on one side on the inside and I'll, I'll come in tighter and sh show you what I'm doing here. what we have is some play and if I tighten this nut here it will pull this fork together. But I think if I put that washer right in there then that that won't happen and maybe it'll last longer. What that's going to do is is give that a nice tight fit in there whereas before it would sandwich this directly against that hub. I think this is a better way of doing it, at least for my brush hog, yours may be different. We'll just put this jam nut on here and we won't tighten it real tight, just enough to get the threads showing on the bolt. So let's see how big it is. I would say based on this wrench, it's an inch and a half would be the size of this nut. I got a little scale here. I don't know if you can see it on this adjustable. Holding the back side with the channel locks is a bit of a challenge because this is a new jam nut or lock nut and it wants to turn really hard. So I tightened the nut to where the wheel is just starting to have a little bit of resistance. And I think that's good. That'll keep that bushing riding against that washer. It probably could be backed off just a hair, but I think after using it for a few minutes, it's gonna be the perfect tension. So the last step we have to do is fill it full of grease and you wanna fill it until you see grease come out on both sides. That's 15 pumps of grease. Go ahead and turn it. See if I can get some more in there. That's 12 more. That's 12 more. I still don't see any grease coming out. I'm looking for grease to come out right there. Still don't see any grease coming out. It took about 30 pumps of grease to get grease to come out on the sides where that bushing is, but now she's fully lubed and we've removed all that slop by putting that new hub on there. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video of us repairing our brush hog out here on Piney Grove. I'll leave a couple links to a couple of our other videos, but until next time, remember, life's short, tractor hard. And now I gotta go tractor hard and brush hog this field.